Hello, America. This is Levin TV. Welcome to our holiday special. And of this program, the January 6th Committee, the Corrupt Counterfeit Committee, the FBI and the GOJ, we dig into their corruption, the corrupt Democrat Party media, a lot of corruption to go around, folks, and their corrupt, despicable panel, Raskin, Schiff, Cheney, Thompson. Also, for icing on the cake, Project Veritas exposes the New York Slimes journalist who admitted January 6th wasn't a big deal after all. Go. This is where freedom rings. If you believe in America, if you believe in the Constitution, the Constitution empowers us. It's a new day. America's back. America's back and America's going to get strong again. We're going to defend America and we're going to defend our interests. Liberty's Voice, Levin TV. Congress doesn't have a role in conducting investigations for criminal purposes, whether directly or, re or to refer them to the Department of Justice. We already know the FBI and Department of Justice, is they are corrupt. They're corrupt right now. You can see Garland. Garland's a figurehead like Mueller was. It's the Deputy Attorney General. She's the radical, going after parents and so forth and so on. So this is a big problem. This is how NBC News covered this the other day. Go. Breaking news just coming into us actually from back on the Hill from the House Committee investigating January 6th. They are putting out subpoenas now. For now why is this breaking news that they're putting out subpoenas? Because the media want it to be breaking news. That's why the media are all over this. Here we are again. Russia collusion all over again. Go ahead. I want to bring in Garrett Hake, who is back on the Hill for us with this developing news. Garrett, I know we just talked to you on a different topic. This is the life of our Capitol Hill correspondent here. Yes. These subpoenas, not shocking, right, because these are people who did not cooperate with the committee. The committee wants to know what kind of planning and discussion was going on as it relates to the insurrection at the Capitol. All right, stop, stop, stop. What kind of planning was going on as it relates to the insurrection at the Capitol? Number one, there was no insurrection at the Capitol. Number two, what do they mean what kind of planning was taking place? You can't just issue subpoenas and start grabbing everybody's text messages and emails and documents and, and forcing them to testify and so forth. You need to have some, some predicate, what they call a criminal predicate. And if you're running a House committee, criminal predicates are none of your damn business. That belongs to another branch of the federal government. It's called the executive branch. So when she says they want to know about the planning for the insurrection, this is, this is again, an explanation that, that underscores the point I'm trying to make. They're going after Trump criminally. They don't have that power. They're going after Trump's people to see what kind of planning they had in order to take over. That, that's not their role. They should be questioning Pelosi about what kind of protection she provided or rejected when it came to this uh, to this event, go ahead. The problem that I think the committee's going to run into here, Hallie, is those three in particular were all attorneys, and they were all. And Rudy Giuliani will probably make this point the most because he was working with the president the longest. Might lean on attorney-client privilege to not disclose their yep. conversations with the president. So I expect a protracted legal fight here. But obviously, several key players right at the heart of the effort That's by right. the Trump White House to, to fight the election results of 2020. Key players in what? To fight the election results of 2020. Gee, that's never happened. I seem to remember all the litigation surrounding 2000 election. Remember that, ladies and gentlemen? And again, the 2016 election. We had to have a criminal investigation of the president to figure out his ties to Russia when there were none. Remember all this stuff? that they wanted to interview the president, get him in front of a grand jury. Remember that was discussed for month after month. Remember the secret indictments that were under seal when there were none against the president of the United States. Remember all this stuff. And so now we have a situation where they want to get to the bottom of what was discussed with the president. They have nothing in terms of whether the president was involved in an insurrection. Number one, he was not, or they would have leaked it by now. And number two, it wasn't an insurrection. Bring you this. This is really pretty fascinating. You got to listen carefully. It is a Project Veritas undercover reporter uh, interviewing Matthew Rosenberg, a journalist for the New York Slimes. And they catch it all on video, and you're going to see what they really think of January 6th. They don't think it's some great insurrection because it wasn't. And yet, that's the ideology, that's the position they push day in and day out, every damn one of them. Let's take a look. 
Go. Like, like you can tell how much fun we had on January. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Are you allowed to have that much fun on January? Like, I, I just I, morning. I know, I know. <laughs> so, so if you're traumatized, but like you know, all these colleagues who are in the building, little younger, who's like, oh my god, this is so scary. I'm like, oh, is that like, really the vibe there? From them. I'm like, come yeah. on. Like, it's not the kind of place I can sit and tell somebody to man up, but I kind of want to. You're like, dude, come on. Like, you were not in any danger. Matthew Rosenberg is a Pulitzer Prize winning national security correspondent for the New York Times. In multiple meetings with one of our undercover journalists, Rosenberg reveals a lot about the inner workings and inner turmoil at the Times. For starters, he doesn't hesitate to undermine his own paper's coverage of the events that took place in our nation's capital on January 6, 2021, and chides corporate media's reaction, or in his own words, overreaction. It's like they've been doing, it's like, I usually, I work for, I do investigative stuff, I usually do like longer term things, but I'm like, I got back to work on Monday, and the man, managing editor had a, a great idea that he could have had a month ago, which was like, we should really, me and a colleague had done like a very like long 7,000 word story last year in February about like kind of the big lie about the Stop the Steal campaign, which is a very organized campaign, it wasn't like an organic one. He's like, can we do like part two of that? Like what's going on in the years from January 6th to kind of like memory holding it? Like maybe it's no big deal. Like, yeah, we can do that. It's a little quick turnaround. So we've we'll been doing the last few days. That's the story. But it's in a meeting. I'm like, you know, one of the issues here is that like the Fox News of the world, but elsewhere is that the left's overreaction, the left's reaction to it in some places was so over the top that it gave the opening, the right even, to start introducing the idea of, well, these people out of control. Like, it's not a big deal as we're making it. Because they were making too big a deal. They were making this organized thing that it wasn't. And that gave the opening for the illusions in the right to be like, oh, well, nothing happened here. It was just a peaceful bunch of tourists, you know? And it's like, just, but nobody wants to hear Not as big of a deal as the media made it out to be? Well, that hasn't stopped Rosenberg from publishing his part two article earlier this year describing the false narratives that circulate around January 6th in the events that unfolded. You know, we're the ones, not Fox, not my party, who actually went and uncovered the fact that, like, there were a ton of FBI informants on the people who attacked the Capitol. Oh, 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 wow. We're the ones who uncovered a bunch of F... There were a ton of FBI informants among the people who attacked the Capitol. We're the ones. Think they'll subpoena this journalist? The January 6th committee to get to the bottom of all this? Not a chance. This is breaking news. This is a big deal. Because what Matthew Rosenberg, Pulitzer Times, Pulitzer, what is it called? Prize, award-winning journalist, is exposing is that his entire profession is filled with phonies, including those at the New York Times. Talk to um, people who got arrested their families? Or their, their neighbors? There's just neighbors and stuff. Families usually don't want to talk, for good reason. Have you guys talked to anybody who's actually been arrested? Yeah, although most of them have their lawyers who have told them not to talk to us. Like if, Why? If you're facing serious criminal charges, you probably will, I think, should just talk to a journalist. Unless there's like a very specific reason that you need, like, that some good come of it, like, there's no way you should talk to me. No good's gonna come of it. Why not? Because anything you say can end up in court. And you just don't want to be addressed. I wouldn't know. Rosenberg is right. What good can come from speaking to a journalist who privately describes the events on January 6th as not a big deal, yet spins something entirely different for the world to read in his newspaper? Project Veritas has received letters from those incarcerated for being present that day. Voices that remain unheard describe a total lack of due process, spurred by the reactions, or in Rosenberg's words, overreaction, of how those events were portrayed around the world by the media and politicians. That is so compelling, so fascinating from, a, from an observing perspective. But substantively it's so outrageous you have a big time reporter for the new york times he's cracking jokes about the people he has to write this with that they're basically young punks traumatized and he's laughing at it because he knows you want to see trauma go over to ukraine right now go to these other places see what traumatizing really means 
Uh, this wasn't traumatizing. And um, in the way that he talks about how the left has overplayed its hand and so forth and so on. I mean, this is what they know. This is what they believe. But then they go on camera and they lie to you because they're pushing this agenda. This guy, Raskin. Raskin, whose father I've told you about, he comes out of this radical family. He's been on both of the impeachment committees and he's on the January 6th committee because he's a chip off his old father's block and his old father was a red. But he'd been a professor of the Constitution, constitutional law for a period of time. It's amazing to me. Shouldn't he be a professor against the Constitution or rather than of the Constitution? Well, here he is with a really hardball interview on MSLSD. Go. Well, <clears throat> the first thing is that the Senate impeachment trial was about one guy, Donald Trump, and one crime, incitement to violent insurrection. One crime? Was he convicted of some crime? Incitement to insurrection. God help us. I just hope this isn't the, the narrative for the next 50 to 100 years in this country, because the Democrats are working very, very hard to make it the narrative. Go ahead. The mandate of the select committee is far broader. It's much Where did the mandate come from? This select committee. Pelosi. There's no real Republicans on this committee. Remember, uh, the majority Republican leader, Kevin McCarthy, wasn't allowed to appoint his own members. So we've never seen anything like this, but that's the nature of Nancy Pelosi, Eva Pelosi. But remember, he says, this isn't just narrow like impeachment. The Trump, it's not narrow like, like Watergate just on there. No, it's broad. We can go after everybody and anybody for anything. And if they don't dump all their materials in our laps so we can use it against them, politically, of course, uh, we will seek an indictment against them from our always objective and independent attorney general of the Department of Justice. We will go after them if they don't submit. I am telling you this is precisely what the framers of the Constitution rejected. This is a disgrace. Go. It's much more sweeping than that. We're looking at all of the events of the day, all of the causes and what needs to be done to fortify democratic institutions in the future. So we're looking at that mob riot, which surrounded a violent insurrection of domestic violent extremist white nationalist groups surrounding a presidential coup against the wow, vice president. Wow, he's got it all down, doesn't he? He's got a little Marxist. He's got it all down, a res insurrection, white supremacist, a presidential coup. He's got it down, man. Go ahead. And against the Congress. And we're going to tell the story of each dimension of this attack on American democracy. And the American people have not yet seen all of the evidence laid out in this way. So we're going to have hearings. Uh, for the American people, which I hope will um, seem somewhat like the Watergate hearings. Ah, the Watergate hearings. That's what we need. Watergate hearings, yeah. Uh, these are the people who oppose the Army McCarthy hearings, the Un-American Activities Committee. And yet, isn't this what we're getting in reverse? It seems to me we're getting this in reverse. This has nothing to do with the Watergate committee or the, committee or the Iran Contra committee or anything like that. They have a result and they're trying to lay the stage, cherry pick the information. They have a, not just a friendly media, a uh, regurgitating media that slobbers all over them and can't wait. You saw the woman. Oh yes, uh, breaking story, breaking, their subpoenas have been issued. And um, it's really uh, appalling how they set all this up, January 6th and so forth. I don't know. I'm, I don't, I, I'm very, very troubled by all this. And the pushback has to be strong. You know, I push back here. I have on Fox. I do on my radio show frequently. And of course, they want to suggest that I support the violent overthrow of the government and the violent attack on the Capitol. But it doesn't matter how many times I, I reject that. And I reject violence, period. Uh, it doesn't matter. These guys have the, uh, the bullhorns, and they're using them. These guys have the soapboxes, and they're using them. This guy's among the worst of the propagandists. He learned very, very well at his father's feet. And in the Situation Room, a member of Congress, you see a Republican, is accused of leading 
future violent rioters through the building the day before, January 6. Turns out it was investigated by the Capitol Police and another committee who said, no, he wasn't. Those were his constituents. But one of them, says Mediaite today, one of them appears in a video of being in the building. Well, what does that have to do with the congressman? Nothing. So this committee is smearing people, trying to destroy their reputations and career. Only Republicans, by the way. Uh, that's why it's so important that committees like this never exist, where the Speaker of the House appoints every single member. The opposition has no members, no members appointed by them, no opposition witnesses, no opposition depositions, no opposition texts or emails, no challenges, no motions, no questions. Um, it's just really appalling. And the media, of course, go along because the media are corrupt and they're gone. This is Lofgren being questioned. CNN, go. And joining us now, a key member of the January 6th House Select Committee, Democratic Congresswoman Zoe Lofgren. Congresswoman, thanks so much for joining us. I want to remind our viewers what you told CNN yesterday about the Trump family profiting off, off these election lies. Watch this. Listen to this. You were just asked, um, I think, by Manu Raju uh, if the committee has found evidence that Trump and his family, quote, personally benefited, yes. personally benefited from donations. And you said, yes. That's a serious allegation. Do you have more details? Is that a crime? I don't know. I, you know, we're a legislative committee, so that's, that's for somebody else you to know, decide. You know, the media is amazed. They want a crime. They keep pushing. Will there be an indictment? Is there a crime? It's just incredible. Fake tapper here. Go ahead. Uh, but for example, we know that um, Guilfoyle was paid uh, for the introduction she gave at the speech. I mean, on January 6th, she received compensation for that. But is that a, is that a crime? I'm not saying it's a crime, but I think it's a grift. Okay, okay, okay. First of all, what is this committee investigating exactly? She's worried about grift? Did we not just spend time on Biden? Grift, $30 million or more? Is Zoe Lofgren, if that is her name, is Zoe concerned about grift, really? No, I don't think so. Go. Since learned, uh, Congresswoman, it was Turning Point USA, a separate conservative pro-Trump organization that uh, actually paid Kimberly So Gil what? So it turns out the money raised... Uh, to defend certain individuals on January 6th was not used like the original allegation was. This committee just throws this stuff around and the media chew it up and then they have to circle back, I hope, to try and straighten it out. Go ahead. Did you mischaracterize that payment? Well, I don't think so. It, it's one, it's a part and parcel of the Trump campaign. Uh, as a matter of fact, the major donor uh, to that was a woman who took the Fifth Amendment when she was interviewed by us, who specifically excluded speaker's fees. Okay, hold on, hold, hold on. I'm getting so pissed off at this stuff, you have no idea. They force people to testify under threat of obstructing Congress and criminal charges. They tell them, you show up and you, say, and you assert the Fifth Amendment if you believe that this might harm you with a criminal investigation at the Justice Department. So the people show up and they plead the fifth for good damn reason, as I would advise a client, because this is a setup. This isn't separation of powers. They're working together. They're colluding this committee in the Justice Department. They're trying to go through the back door, violate the Bill of Rights to get information. So they say, well, if you show up, at least show up and assert the fifth. Apparently, she asserted the fifth on something, and you see the kind of snarky response you get? And she asserted the fifth on this. What does that mean? Oh, she must be guilty. No, she's not guilty. She was advised by competent counsel. Look, don't say anything to these people, because then you're giving information that's not acquired in the proper way, that's not asked it the proper way to people who might want to harm you criminally. Make them use the constitutional processes. 
So when she makes a comment like that, it grabs my attention immediately. I know it doesn't Wolf Blitzer because he's too stupid, but it grabs my attention. You force these people into this star chamber, these secret depositions. You tell them, plead the fifth, if that's what you think. They plead the fifth, and then you come out on national TV and say, well, she did plead the fifth, you know. What the hell does this have to do with January 6th, except nothing? And to his credit, Wolf Blitzer says, so the money didn't come from money raised this way. It came from this pack. But your allegation was that it came nefariously. Well, it's all kind of the same thing. No, it's not kind of the same thing. Go ahead. Um, from her donation. And obviously that was done in contravention to that uh, caveat. But the, the question is, uh, are Trump individuals benefiting from this whole um, enterprise of raising money around the, the so-called... No, that's not the question. The question is, what happened on January 6th and why didn't you secure the building? If there's a question of money, raising money, that's not your job. You're not doing a criminal investigation. You just said so. You're doing a legislative investigation. Now, why do they keep saying, on the one hand, that they, they want indictments, they want criminal investigation, but on the other hand, we're not doing it? I'll tell you why. Because one day this may go all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court, and one of the main arguments you make, and I've been making this, which is why you're seeing it in people's briefs, because I make it on the air, this entire enterprise is unconstitutional, not because of the makeup of the committee, but because Congress doesn't have the power and the authority to violate the federal constitution, go outside its lane and conduct a criminal investigation and, and violate people's rights under the Bill of Rights. That's it. Go ahead. The steal. And the answer is yes. Um, you know, we will, I'm working with the uh, committee staff, the accountants and financial lawyers. We're going to put out some additional information and people just can Why do you have accountants and financial lawyers on this committee? Why do you have prosecutors on this committee? They have, I, I heard, around 11 former federal prosecutors, including two former U.S. attorneys. Now we learn they have uh, financial experts and, and financial attorneys. To what end? Because this is not about the failure to protect the building on January 6th. This is a far-reaching criminalization of politics investigation. That's what it is. The Democrat Party and the Never Trumpers investigating Trump world and the Republicans. That's what's going on. Go ahead. And reach their own conclusions. We hope to have that out in the next couple of days. All right, we'll look forward to seeing all that information. Uh, your committee chairman, Benny Thompson, said last night that the committee will not make any criminal referrals to the U.S. Justice Department. Did he speak too soon in ruling that out? Well, in talking to Benny, I think he, I don't want to speak for him, but I think... But uh, I will. His comment was misconstrued, I think, or... All right. The That's their goal. Criminal referral. They don't even have the authority to make a criminal referral. Did you know that? Doesn't matter. This is the tyranny of the legislature. Deciding here what Adam Schiff looks like. I won't tell you what we were discussing. But I will say this. He either has a plate in his head or he needs a plate in his head. Do you guys even know what I mean by that? He looks very strange, doesn't he? He's a very strange looking guy. And he's also a pathological liar. He's a nut job, uh, which is, of course, why he's loved by the media. He's also a leaker. Wouldn't you love to have his emails and texts and everything to see what he was up to? What a slime ball. But there he is. And so, of course, and not surprisingly, he was on CNN. And of course, and not surprisingly, nobody saw him. So I'm bringing him to you because I want to make a point. This committee that they've set up, this January 6th committee, I've explained it over and over, so I won't bore you, but it is uh, alien to our system and alien to any system that believes in getting to the truth. And of course, the media love it, as do the Democrats, as do the never-Trumpers. But here we are. Here we go. Go.
We do already know a lot about Georgia, including that phone call we just played. Uh, what are you going to reveal new about Georgia and also Arizona? Uh, you know, like most of the other hearings, there'll be a combination of things that are already uh, in the public arena and a lot of new information. Uh, and what I think is most significant is we will weave it together, uh, tell the public how one thing led to another, one pressure campaign, as we saw last week on you the You know, the, the amazing thing about this is he is revealing what they're doing. We'll take this little piece here. We'll take this little piece, like I said, a hundred thousand puzzle pieces. We'll put it together and we'll weave our story together because that's what prosecutors do. And then the other side unravels it. But there is no other side. Nobody's there to unravel anything. Nobody's there to test their witnesses, to test their theories, to check their weaving. Nobody's there to bring their own witnesses, exculpatory evidence, nothing. So Rudy Giuliani is smeared and other people are the former chief of staff to President Trump, Mark Meadows is smeared, and it goes on and on and on. It's just uh, we've never seen anything like this in American history. Go. On the vice president to ignore the Constitution, put the vice president's life in danger, uh, and this week we'll hear about how a similar pressure campaign directed against state and local elections officials um, put You're their... You're allowed to call state and local election officials, ask them to look at something, you sure you can't find more votes? That doesn't mean you're creating fraud or telling somebody to make up ballots or anything of the sort. This happens all the time. And as I said at the opening of the program, they're investigating now the campaigns in the various states of the Republicans. What is it that the Republicans did? But they have nothing here about the Democrats. Mark Elias, the main slip and fall ambulance chasing lawyer for the Democrats. They had 600 lawsuits they brought before and during the election. Uh, what about the various governors, secretaries of state, attorneys general, and even elected judges, including the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania, their actions, are they not held to account for how they violated the federal constitution or anything that they did, change the election rules, uh, even during the election? There's no hearings on any of this. Isn't that amazing? They say they've called a thousand witnesses, but they left off the thousand and one witness, Nancy Pelosi. Does this sound like a hearing about January 6 anymore? Now they try and slice it in where they can, but it's really not. This is just an effort now to attack the election uh, activities of, uh, of the Republicans and of Donald Trump. Go ahead. And similarly, the president was told this scheme uh, is essentially uh, something that his own lawyers couldn't justify, uh, but yet he pressed on, uh, uprooted people's lives, uh, put their lives and our democracy very much at risk. Your hearing will include evidence about Trump electors in battleground states who submitted fake electoral college ballots, even though Trump lost. They submitted fake electoral college ballots? I don't even know anything about this, but they must have submitted contrary ballots. Fake, contrary, whatever. I have no idea. I know they're trying to loop Senator Johnson into this in some way, which he's denied. But again, Senator Johnson can't get his good name back because of the way this is set up. Go ahead. These states that we're talking about. We have already heard that campaign officials, Trump campaign officials, were involved in that. Do you have evidence that the former president himself was involved? Uh, yes, we'll show evidence of the president's involvement uh, in this scheme. Uh, we'll also, again, uh, show evidence. President's involvement in what scheme? They've got so many schemes going, I don't even know what they're talking about. Fake electors or lobbying officials or uh, lobbying state legislature? What are they talking about? Go ahead. Evidence uh, about what his own lawyers uh, came to think See, about See, that's this. the predicate. That's what I picked up on very quickly. What did his own lawyers think? His own lawyers said, don't do it, Mr. President. You have no legal authority. You have no constitutional way out. It's illegal. Don't do it, Mr. President. That's why Bill Barr now is their favorite Republican. Was Kingsinger, was Dizzy Lizzy, but now it's Bill Barr. Remember they wanted to impeach him and hang him from a telephone pole like Mussolini? Not now. No, ticker tape parade time. They want to build him up so then they knock him out like a pinata. 
But anyway, so um, they want to show that Donald Trump knew that he'd be violating the law, so he obstructed and committed acts of fraud. Now, these statutes they talk about have nothing to do with this, but I am very worried about the judges and the U.S. attorney in Washington, D.C., where Donald Trump will not be able to get a fair shake. It worries me a lot. Go. And we'll show courageous state officials who stood up uh, and said they wouldn't go along with this uh, plan to either call legislatures back into session or decertify the results for Joe Biden. Uh, the system held because a lot of uh, state and local elections officials um, upheld their oath to their constitution, a lot of them Republicans, uh, as well as Democrats. We've seen a lot of taped testimony from the hundreds, even more, uh, of uh, closed door testimony that you've done as a committee. But why aren't you calling witnesses in a public way who might challenge the committee? Wow, she obviously listens to Life, Liberty, and Levin on Sundays, or even Levin TV, or one of her producers might. Go ahead. Intentional because you don't want to deviate from the storyline that you were trying to present to the public and, of course, potentially to the Justice Department? Uh, no. I mean, we, we are interviewing, frankly, anyone that has relevant evidence. Uh, we're putting that relevant evidence before the public. Uh, and we're doing it uh, in a way that uh, um, is the most cohesive and that we can get across the salient points to the public. So, like, why not subpoena Mike Pence, for example, if he won't? I know you asked him to testify voluntarily. That didn't happen. Um, you know, we're not taking anything off the table in terms of witnesses. Yes, you not. are taking everything off the table. Everything. I talked about this the other day. You had Bill Barr, who said there was no systemic fraud. You had the former U.S. attorney for Philadelphia in the environs, who said that when uh, he wanted to uh, bring matters of fraud to the attention of the public and even take them on, he was told by Bill Barr not to. They had evidence of fraud to give it to the state attorney general, who's a Democrat running for governor, uh, excuse me, running for senator and uh, don't make a public announcement. So clearly that's not what they're doing. They're only calling witnesses who they can believe can help or witnesses who they believe uh, they can smear, and then in return uh, they'll play little clips of it. And nobody is there to challenge how they're doing this, cherry-picking it. Nobody is there to challenge any of it, even the credibility of some of the witnesses. Go ahead. Justified. Um... We would still, I think, like to have several high-profile people come before our committee. Um, but uh, at the moment, um, I, I can't disclose what private conversations may or may not be going on with, with respect to certain individuals. But there are still key people we have not interviewed that we would like to. So Mike Pence is a possibility still? Uh, you know, certainly a possibility. We're not excluding anyone or anything at this point. Here's the other problem. If they're subpoenaing somebody to testify, and they've already announced that their goal here is to bring uh, criminal cases to the attention of the Justice Department, and if you think they're targeting you, you would be a fool to do anything but uh, plead the fifth, because the constitutional protections that are in place when you're under investigation by the executive branch are not in place when you're under investigation by a Stalinist committee like this under the uh, rubric of a legislative oversight here. You don't have the same protections. So anything you say can and will be used against you without the ability to object to certain of the information, without the rules of evidence, without the criminal code, without all these other things that are put in place for the purpose of protecting the individual. It's the whole point of the Bill of Rights, to protect the individual from the government. Well, that doesn't apply for the most part. Um, and they've subpoenaed some people who they know will have to plead the fifth, and then they mock the person when they do. But I'm talking about people who would contradict some of their witnesses in testimony, contradict them. We know nothing about the Speaker of the Arizona House of Representatives, except he recently got... Um, just like Liz Cheney did, an award from the John Kennedy Library and Foundation, a Profiles and Courage Award. They're handing them out to these uh, Republicans who are testifying like they're handing out, uh, you know, lollipops. The problem with Liz Cheney, Liz Cheney has had a hate on from Trump before he was elected. She bought into the 
the uh, lies that Donald Trump uh, was allowing Putin to assassinate our uh, men and women in uniform without objecting to it. Well, of course, Donald Trump never did that. You know, if something sounds ridiculous, it is ridiculous. And um, she was thrown out of the number three position by the Republicans. They voted her out. Why? Because she was going her own way. She's, she's marching to her own drummer. And what is that drummer? She hated Trump's foreign policy, which was wildly successful. She hated Trump's language. The Cheneys and Bush hated the way he campaigned against Jeb Bush and really made mincemeat of Jeb Bush. Jeb Bush really had no chance. He was supposed to be leading in the primaries, you will recall. And Trump also attacked the Iraq war, whose main proponent was, of course, Dick Cheney. So those two families that think they own the Republican Party and are leading icons of the establishment, uh, they've been at war with Trump. So they're more than happy. Uh, to work with the Democrats. Adam Kingsinger got elected as a Tea Party Republican. That's how he won his first primary. That's how he won his first seat. Coming to Washington, D.C., he turned on the Tea Party like so many did, and they went at each other like this. His seat was combined with another seat, uh, so you had two Republicans running against each other some years ago, and Kingsinger moved to the middle or to the left of the center. Uh, in order to win that seat, and he won that seat. This time he was uh, uh, also gerrymandered against a, a Democrat, and he gave up because he couldn't win. That's why. So he's another one who's been utterly unprincipled. So these people come to this battle trying to get even with Donald Trump personally. Now, I've said many times this committee is unconstitutional, not because the way it's made up, that violates you know, over 200 years of tradition in the House of Representatives, that's a big deal. But it's unconstitutional because it's violating the Constitution's separation of powers. It is not free to conduct a criminal investigation, a quasi-criminal investigation, to basically conduct an investigation for their friends and the cohorts in the U.S. Attorney's Office in Washington or the Attorney General, two Democrats appointed by Biden who are highly, highly partisan because you do not have the same constitutional protections when you're testifying in front of a committee of Congress as you do when you're testifying at a grand jury or when you're facing a trial. You don't even have a right to conduct your own discovery, right? That's not taking place here. You don't have a right to make certain objections. Uh, they'll hold you in contempt, and then contempt of Congress is a crime in and of itself, and this committee has demonstrated that it will use that against officials. It really is a star chamber process. So when you have Schiff and uh, you have Kingsinger and you have Cheney and others talking about prosecutions, criminal referrals, these are crimes that have been committed and on and on and on, as they doctor evidence, so-called, cherry pick witnesses, spoon feed witnesses, lie on the record about what they know and don't know, censor and conceal other witnesses and information, this is diabolical absolutely diabolical. And then when you have the press, including conservative press, saying, here's what we learned today. You didn't learn anything. It's like after Hutchison, Cassidy Hutchison testified, all of a sudden we learned, wait a minute, Secret Service says he didn't grab the other Secret Service member. Wait a minute. Another lawyer says he wrote the note. She didn't write the note. Now we have a text that says she viewed the whole committee process as BS just about six or eight weeks ago. This is the kind of information an opposition would use to raise questions about the credibility of a witness in real time. And it is exactly what this committee does not want made public. Go ahead. Uh, with bringing charges. She said this in an ABC interview. She also said there are possible criminal referrals, not just one, but multiple. Do you agree? Uh, I do. I do. Uh, you know, for four years, the Justice Department took the position that you can't indict a sitting president. You know, it's just amazing to me. So here we have this one-sided committee. And then over the weekend, they, they spread out on these different Sunday shows. So now you have a reporter who hates Trump quoting Cheney, who hates Trump, and asking Schiff about what Cheney said. He hates Trump. 
And of course, they're pushing to make referrals on multiple counts against Trump. And Liz Cheney, the reason why you're furious about Liz Cheney is you supported her father in two elections. You defended her father against the Halliburton and other charges. You found Liz Cheney somewhat appealing. Liz Cheney was a congresswoman and still is, I guess. And now you see her true colors. She is a vicious hack. That's what she is. And she provides cover for the Democrats. Go ahead. Uh, if Actually, the... don't go ahead. I don't want to hear any more. Jay Johnson was the secretary of DHS under Obama. Now, I don't agree with everything this man says. Matter of fact, I agree with about 10 or 15 percent of what he says. He's sort of a moderate Democrat. He's not one of these AOC types and so on. But I thought he was on Meet the Depress with uh, Schmuck Todd. I thought some of what he said was actually interesting. And since none of us watched it in real time, let's take a look. Go. I have to begin with this. Um, while a lot of men are hiding under their desk in lawyers' offices, th this hearing has really been a profile in courage among women. How stupid. It's been a profile in courage among women? Why? Because some women have testified and some have actually changed their testimony to support what the committee is doing. Let me ask you something. Who's in worse shape in front of this committee? Somebody who doesn't tow the committee's line or somebody who does? So this whole thing about it being about women is idiotic. Go ahead. Uh, Caroline Edwards, Cass Hutchinson, and Liz Cheney. I think that this hearing has been choreographed exceptionally well for the... Now, that's interesting. That's part of the reasons I'm playing. It's been choreographed especially well. That's not the purpose of a hearing, is it? To be a propaganda film for the Democrat Party and the Never Trumpers. Go ahead. Attention span of the average American in 2022. I see a case being developed of the criminal charges that Danny laid out, plus uh, giving aid and comfort to an insurrection. What happened on January 6th? So pathetic. Aid and comfort to an insurrection? Oof. Go ahead. Definition of an insurrection. I'm concerned as the, the former federal prosecutor in me, that gets you a lot of cred these days on, yeah. on, on television. They, I'm concerned that the committee may have overreached on the incident in the vehicle. It hmm. was colorful, it was vivid, it was collateral to the central charge. If, and it was secondhand hearsay. Well, let me pause you there, because it's funny you say that, because the fact that the former president is obsessing over the incident yeah. and nothing else of the testimony, I think, speaks volumes. You see that? See Chuck Todd? He's got four guests there, three and a half of whom hate Trump. Can you imagine me there? Oh, man, that'd be the meat, the depressed of the century. No brag, just fact. I could, I, I'd love a chance to chew them up. You know, years and years ago, I was a contributor to MSNBC before it was what it is today. It was actually a news channel. It really was. And they, they were proud of that. And uh, uh, you may remember the host Gibson, who was on uh, Fox as well. Not Charlie Gibson, a different Gibson. And uh, they used to have four boxes. And they would have three boxes of leftists and me. And I had a blast because I figured, okay, I get the same amount of time as these three. And that's how I came to other people's attention, the whole Fox thing and part of radio and so forth, just me against three. And I could just see here, my goodness, can you imagine? Trump's obsessing us, so it's Trump's fault that this backbencher staffer testified and her testimony turns out to be false. Go ahead. How he's characterizing this. This lady yesterday, there's something wrong with her? Is there something wrong? She said, I jumped from a car and I started strangling. Think of this. I started strangling a Secret Service agent right. who I know very well. I grabbed the steering wheel of a car. 
uh, that you said that I wanted guns at my rally. I didn't want guns. I have to speak too, and I don't did, want did guns you for grab anybody. The steering wheel? Is that? Is there any truth uh, of to that? Of course not. That What's fascinating is that they try to find I me. Mean, what Trump's always been good at is finding a specific he thinks he can yeah. deny to try to cast doubt yeah. on everything. Here's why I would have hesitated on that. If Ali Vitali tells me that Mariana told her that Matt told Mariana <laughs> yeah. that Chuck Todd hit him, yeah. I would want to know exactly what Matt has to say about that incident firsthand. I'd before be willing I go to testify. With the, with the All right, it's good to know. <laughs> under right. oath? But uh, under oath, yeah. a federal law enforcement officer under oath. So... The committee perhaps knows something that the rest of us don't know, but before I went out with the second-hand hearsay, which is going to get a lot of attention, I'd want to know... Here's what the committee knows. It wasn't true. The committee knew it wasn't true. So they didn't want those Secret Service agents testifying. That's why, because it's this is a rogue operation. And I think Chuck Todd's comments are typical of a hack Democrat, which he is and his wife is. And MSNBC and NBC and Comcast Cable that owns both of them is really a disgusting corporatist disgrace. But notice the propaganda inside the insurrection. So that is a fact, right? It's treated as a fact, even though there was no insurrection. Ladies and gentlemen, there hasn't been a syllable of testimony from Cash Patel or from the former acting Secretary of Defense, Smith, or from even Milley, public testimony, there's been private testimony, of the offer by Donald Trump. He wasn't prodded on January 4th, 48 hours before the event, authorizing up to 20,000 armed members of the military, National Guard, to protect the Capitol building should Nancy Pelosi or Mayor of D.C. Bowser request it but they have to request it. They rejected it. The mayor specifically in writing and Pelosi through the chief of the Capitol Hill police, he turned it down. Yes, as Hutchison testified, apparently the executive branch was aware of potential violence. The FBI was aware of potential violence, presumably meaning the Department of Justice was aware of potential violence, presumably, meaning Nancy Pelosi was aware of potential violence. I can't believe she was the only one who wasn't. Where's Christopher Ray's testimony? Or anybody else for that matter? Cash Patel testified, the first witness out of a thousand that they called to testify. How do I know this? Because he was on my radio show last week and I went through this like a prosecutor, questioning a witness politely. He even said, this is the first time I've been questioned this way. Yes, exactly. Because I'm not asking you leading questions. He not only said that Trump signed the authorization, signed it, but that Trump also authorized the Department of Defense in November after the election to begin the transition process between Trump and Biden people, which they did. That hasn't been made public either during the course of this hearing. Now, why are these two huge facts not made public? Except by me, Hannity, a few others. Because it kills the narrative. If President Trump was involved in an insurrection or aiding and abetting an insurrection, whatever the hell that is, they'll come up with all kinds of new arguments. Why would he offer 20,000 armed men and women why would he have, months before, uh, initiated the transition? Didn't mean he didn't want to challenge the election with every legal tool and political tool he had. But there's no inside the insurrection. And this was the only insurrection I know since the beginning of mankind that did not involve shooting. The only shots fired were that of a Capitol policeman who killed a innocent, nonviolent protester. So this whole thing is propaganda, like Russia collusion and all the rest. It's just disgusting. That's what I would say if I were sitting there, which is why I'm not sitting there. Go ahead. The first-hand witness has to say. All right, anyway, so he's saying what, what I had said when I heard, I'll be honest with you, I was writing 
a news person at Fox who said her testimony was unbelievable. And I said, it is unbelievable. Where are the Secret Service agents? They're the ones who need to testify. An hour later, the Secret Service put out a statement that those agents insisted on publicly testifying under oath because what she said was not accurate. Anybody who has spent two seconds, not even in a courtroom, but thinking about litigation would know you need to check that. And it turns out that they knew it. You got 11 former federal prosecutors working on this committee. I am told. Two former U.S. attorneys. They didn't know. Of course they knew. Welcome back. Wasn't that fantastic? Oh my goodness. I would even call it fabulous. And by the way, Thanks for watching, and don't forget, go to blazetv.com slash levintv, blazetv.com slash levintv, promo code MARK20, get $20 off an annual subscription. You can give it as a gift, because obviously you're watching right now. Give it as a perfect Hanukkah Christmas gift. Or Kwanzaa, may I say Kwanzaa? I think I will. Mm -hmm.